separating those two games. Uh, it's clearly meant to be an exciting game with a hot and cold Dignitas against our number two in FlyQuest. Teams jumping into Champ Select, so it's our cue to hand it off to Riven Jat. Thank you very much, Dash. We are serving them up hot today, and there is no other way to receive the LCS other than watching here. So there you go. Oh, all right. You're Please. in there. Yeah, we're really quick into picks and bans as well. You can <laughs> see a lot of power picks taken away. Uh, healing ban, even though Soraka has been nerfed, but there's always that threat that Huni would be willing to play something like that in the top lane. And happy to see Orn gone. Very interested, though, uh, about the fact that Set wasn't first picked. Yeah. And then we get to see that Ophelio sent a trade for the first time in a while. Sen has actually been banned every game of the LCS this week. So this is going to be Wild Turtle playing it, but it's going to be the Senna that doesn't take CS early on because you're trying to generate more souls. So I will, so. I'll explain this in detail once we get into the game, but just so you know, uh, that's probably what's going to happen. So Ophelio's picked up there for Johnson. A lot of priority there for him. He has had good plays on it, but getting the bot lane comfortable seems to be in the mind of Dignitas. They're five and five versus FlyQuest seven and four here on the record books. As we are waiting for a final first phase pick here from Dignitas. Safe bottom lane as well. Yeah. With a bit of power from that Tom Kench and also a Jarvan roaming around the jungle for Greg. Yeah, very early jungle lock for this patch. Most teams kind of let it go through to phase two of the draft and instead try and power pick a soul laner in one of these early spots, like something that could go up against set. Uh, but Greg has shown some of his best games on Jarvan. That was the the hot side of Dignitas that Mark talked about on the desk, not the cold, bad turret diving side. <laughs> no more of that. A big pick up for bot lane for sure. Initiation there. Don't have to think about too much with the press on R. Yeah, so to be set on Nautilus, and I think Nautilus is actually really good for a bot lane CSer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not quite as much peel as we've had in others, like Senna Tom Kench matchups. There's been a, I've seen actually Senna set, although that possibility is gone now since the Nautilus will basically only go support unless they really decide to do a bunch of flex picks and put the Nautilus mid. I'm just generally excited about Senna stuff because it's new, but. I saw Galio a few times at Academy. Maybe that. Mm -hmm. Seen Orn, that's Galio. Cool. Yeah. Orn bot was always fun, because especially when you so, get a few items, you can just headbutt them when they're yeah. under their turret, but just so you take maybe one shot or even get the tether right so you don't. There was actually a Sen of there was a Sen of Volley Bear in the LCK yeah. that worked really well. It was against a Yumi lane, so the mm -hmm. Yumi couldn't do anything to the Saw that. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. I like it. Especially when you're thrown off by the passive and something early. That'll just turn the lane around. Oriana. A mid lane ban, possibly two mid lane bans there in yeah. the final two with Pantheon as well. So we see a lot of focus over towards Froggen here with the initial bans from FlyQuest. And Dignitas says what? Maybe the jungle? Did they hit up Santorin? No, they hit the mid lane. So that Syndra's left open. No, it's not. So it's Zoe and Syndra from Dignitas. Yeah. Tons of guard. mid lane bans towards PoE and Froggen. PoE's actually shown a good amount of versatility so far, as that's likely the Gragas jungle, and they're saving their mid lane pick for last. But uh, the Pantheon ban is actually the most interesting to me by FlyQuest, because that was that was Huni's pick into a set that didn't work. Um, it actually fell flat on its face against Liquid, but clearly it's something they'd practice, and I would actually kind of wager that it might even be something that FlyQuest played against. So they're saying, actually, no, we know Huni can take over games with that pick. Do it. Ooh, the Ziggs locked in. Yasui played Ziggs in the Academy League yesterday. We saw a pretty powerful play from him. Maybe a victor for, for power people here in the mid lane. We'll have to see. They still have one more pick for Dignitas on their side, and that will be their top laner. Yeah, Ziggs has actually seen a little bit of play over in the LCK as well, so it's starting to make its way back into the meta with all the mid lane bans and the fact that Froggen's traditionally so good at skill shot champions. Yeah. I think it's actually kind of a perfect pick in this situation. And getting Mordecai's or Ziggs rounds out like a big time team fighting comp for Dignita. Remember when Aphelios was getting played a lot? I think Def played it against Aiming. He played Ziggs against the Aphelios on the bot <laughs> side. So I was like, where's Ziggs coming from? Now he's back into the mid lane. So yeah, you're right. He has been getting a bit of play time. If they flex this Nautilus mid, and did something else. Yeah, yeah. I would be <laughs> There's that Galio. I'm very excited, but it's just the Kiana and the Ziggs. <laughs> wow, so he is gonna go aggressive on this team. I like it. He's gonna try to dive into the grasps of a Tom Kench, a Mordekaiser. Be quicker than Dignitas can on this Kiana, and we'll see if POE can pull it out. 
going down the list, I do not see a Keanu play in there for him. He has had the Diana. Yeah. So he, he likes to get in there and tussle a bit. We know POE and his builds. I'm excited for this one. But five and five dig, as I said, between the seven and four fly quests as they try to move up the rankings in the second half of the split. Fun bit of history with Power of Evil's Kiana. History me. Is when the champ was released, even though it was Demonte who got all the cred for picking it up first. For sure. Power of Evil was actually the first person drawing Kiana bans. Because he was playing it in scrims, actually making people ban it. And then only after DeMonte had played it a bunch, did PoE play it against DeMonte in the third place match. And you're like, and you're oh like, my God. People were like, oh yeah, Power of Evil trying to deny that Kiana from DeMonte. And it's like, it was true. It was a denial pick. But PoE and COG was like, wait a minute. We were doing it first. We just never got to show it. So it is a champ, even though it's not traditionally PoE's like late game farming style. Right. It's a champ he put a lot of time into right when it came out. And Froggen, again, on something fun. It seems like he always is able to just spread that champion pool a little bit more, and you never know what he's going to bring out in yeah. the mid lane. And I think it offers a lot of versatility to the team. You have Hooney in the top, Froggen in the mid. There's so much you can do with that. I'm excited to see what these teams have for each other on the Rift. The crowd is ready here in the LCS studio as we are about to get into game for game number two of the day. We had a quick one for game number one. Let's see if these teams can keep pace and get to the Nexus first. All right, looking at the items early on, I can confirm that confirm. Wild Turtle, I know this has happened in other leagues, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Whoops. Wild Turtle has the Spectral Sickle, which is the support item, oh. and there's no support item on Ignar. So the reason you do this, uh, for those of you who are unaware, is the soul drop chance on Senna was increased to 25% from minions you don't last hit. So basically all the people that were doing Marksman Senna had really low soul chances. And actually, once you do the math, there's about 54 gold worth of value per soul. So it's actually better, like actually more powerful just for Senna, not even taking into account the other person right. for ranged minions to just let them die into the ether because you're getting more expected value from your souls. And we have a sideline report that we're going to talk about right now, and then I'll get into more Senna stuff. Absolutely. Let's throw it down to the Tigress. Thanks, guys. Do you have a sideline by my side? I just wanted to get your thoughts on how the Ziggs pick is going to capitalize upon what Froggen has to offer. Yeah, so Froggen is traditionally really good at control mages, and I think Ziggs is really good in this meta right now, just because if you ever get that Herald swap timing and you get Herald, uh, you're able to just break a tower from five plates completely. Uh, we had really good results with it in scrims as well, just getting 15 plates, moving around the map as quickly as possible. His ulti is also really good for catching side lane waves when the the team is trying to react. Uh, so we feel really confident about this pick. And considering that Huni and Froggen are both major win conditions, how do you feel about how this can also work with Mordekaiser on the board? Yeah, so Mord, uh, I don't think they have enough damage to kill Mord if he gets ahead. So I'm pretty confident about that pick. And we have Aphelios as uh, that late game insurance as well. Uh, that 200 years of experience really coming in clutch for us. So. I would also like to say that I tried to get you to dance with me for a moment, but that's gonna be my my goal for next time. For now, let's head back to the Rift. <laughs> awesome stuff. We'll see quite a bit of dancing between the teams this game, so we should get our fill. And uh, interesting thing is to hear uh, them reveal about the Ziggs pick, that it's, yeah. feel it's so dominating, gonna control the game, but I guess they have to get to that part first. Yeah, you have to be able to get some other early game pressure to get Ziggs to those turrets. But absolutely, the turret destruction on plates is an amazing synergy yeah. uh, that I'd be looking forward to taking advantage of. 15 plates. You're gonna need something to put those plates in. That's a lot. We don't see that too often, especially the current meta. And we will see, you were talking about Wild Turtle and not farming earlier. I, yeah. My comment was just going to be basically, that's where every marksman would love to be. Just yeah. not having to hit the cannon minion or any minion. Just gotta harass and then you get to play harass. any carry later. Uh, Nautilus is actually really good for it because since he's CSing, mm -hmm. his passive applies so much extra damage that last hitting is very easy for him. Um, not taking that cannon though because it would be too dangerous. Nice snipe of the soul by Wild Turtle there. But yeah, the, the bigger po portion is since Senna doesn't necessarily get much more gold from CSing versus not CSing thanks to the value of souls, yep. the next logical jump is let's put someone down there who will CS instead, and then we get two powerful hits. So we are gonna have a much more powerful tanky support Nautilus and a farm Senna by the end of the game. That's the logic. And right now, they're just going toe to toe. 3v3 on the bot side. Power of Evil's gonna make it a little lopsided, but they have Ignar soloed out. He goes down to a Gravitum lockdown. 
on Johnson's Q. He's out of mana, though, so he's got to be careful as they push the wave with Infernum. They should be able to get out of this one, and what a quick fight towards the bottom side of the map. Yeah, really awkward, where there was basically a mid lane scuttle fight going on yeah. that eventually leaked all the way down to the bottom lane and that made Ignar and Wild Turtle like, we're supposed to be supporting our bottom lane, but we don't have enough tempo, so Ignar just ends up dying. Summoner spells used as well on the side of FlyQuest as they kind of just fought for this minion wave. Yeah, so at this point, like normally FlyQuest would quit the trade, but Santorin's asking for help, and FlyQuest say, okay, we can help you. Meanwhile, the mid lane isn't the first to roam either, so Ignar is actually just completely trapped out. Afro is just baiting out the Grey Health, taking a lot of damage early there. Really well played all around, making sure they did not lose a member. Santorin able to get himself back in and pick something up for the top side, so the team can keep vision. And Huni is 25 to 30 here, all things considered. It's just pretty even. Not too much to worry yeah. about in that lane. Mordekaiser v Set is a difficult matchup for the Mordekaiser, uh, but it is playable. So you often do see Mordekaiser picked in a set. It's just going to be rough. You're trying to wait until level six. And even then, yeah. a lot of times, second out duel you in the death realm. So Huni does have to play this one. Toki uses a cooldown erroneously. Yeah. <laughs> then you're in there to win it, as long as you can hit your grasp. So looking at Infernum and Gravitum for your Felios here. And a 2v1 as Afro move goes ward clearing. Probably hit that Scryer's Bloom, so he's able to now see what he's dealing with. So pretty much even in CS, if you look at the bot, you are going to have to trade Ignars and Wild Turtles. Just keep adding those together. Don't just think Wild Turtles falling behind. Yep. Easy to consider. Yep, adding up. You're basically saying Nau Nautilus is the marksman in terms of CS, even though in terms of the way the game actually plays out, it is still Wild Turtle. It's just his support ends up having higher. Support. This seems like a fun lane, though. <laughs> back and literally just playing, <laughs> playing the waves back and forth. At least he gets it to the turret. So Viper can be rest, or rest assured here that this one will bounce off for him. He's doing pretty good at getting himself into a position where he could take this lane over. But I think Huni has enough to pick up and bring that, like I said, too even. Froggen with the satchel back as he gets a bit of aggression from Power of Evil. Ziggs knows you can't just take that fight 1v1 right out in the early game as Drake going for Drake, and they're going to be able to pick up a cloud for themselves as we see Mountain going to be on the rift. They could try to get to Greg on the back line, but instantly Froggen oh. gets gobbled up. Could that be the save that keeps him alive? What a play. Power of Evil over the wall now to try to kill Greg. The Blast Cone puts him to his death, though, and now they're trying to get on Viper. He gets shoved out, so Haymaker doesn't hit, but it's going to be a big scuffle in the Dragon Pit right now, and that is so far the two for one in favor of FlyQuest as they start to come back here. Six and a half minutes in a double kill coming in for Ignar on the bot side for the tanky Nautilus. The triple from Nautilus oh, at the end. Keep it coming. Yeah, unreal type of fight right there. It looked so harmless at the start. Oh yeah, Grig is just gonna take this Drake and then he's gonna be out of there. But once more people started roaming over, it meant it's not just Grig who needs to die or get out of the pit for this yeah. one. It's the whole team and Fighting Kiana in the river with the ultimate is usually just so lethal early on in the game. What was fascinating about this fight, and I can't wait to see it again, is the Kiana ultimate actually didn't do that much. That gobble up was so good. Yeah, it, I think <laughs> it was Viper's set ultimate that ended up doing most of the work yeah. here right before the Mordekaiser was able to ult him out. So yeah, like Grig can't be involved in this fight, so he's basically not there. Um, and then Froggen is also basically out of the fight and his ult hits no one, so at that point, it is a 3v5, essentially, once everyone arrives, and Viper damages everyone with his ultimate before being taken into the Death Realm, and that kind of allows a level 4 Nautilus and a level 4 Senna to free hit, and it just so happens that the Nautilus takes the kills. And here's <laughs> one for you. He's going AP Nautilus Rift. He's going oh Proto Belt, he the like the mid lane Nautilus like is doing. The revolver, I love it. Oh, man. I've been wondering when people would start doing this. Uh, so, confession, uh, I was doing this Senna X Nautilus don't farm thing since release. Like, I've been all about this farm share slash kind of support Senna with a melee bot laner. I've always, always. thought it was really good. Um, and I did play a lot of Senna Nautilus. I would do like Iceborne Gauntlet Nautilus and stuff for tankiness, but I kept thinking in the back of my head, like, so, like, and this is like for years. I'm not letting everybody know this is for years. Jack plays oh, this stuff bot yeah. lane all the time. I've done double melee and weird bot yes. lane stuff all the time. But Senna actually, this was the first one where I said, wait a minute, this could actually be completely optimal. 
Um, but okay, then I kind of okay. remembered back to Worlds where you got Doon B playing mid lane Nautilus. And when I was playing Nautilus, I said, hey, maybe I should go Proto Belt. I just never had the confidence to think I could play mid uh, AP Nautilus. That's because well. you didn't get a triple kill at Dragon. Because it's six so minutes. punishing. That's also true. Yeah. Um, but we'll see how this ends up working out for Ignar because he will be still relatively low level throughout the game. Um, also, quick note I Hit it. recorded a podcast with the Senna Champion designer, August. Um, for JLXP, and that's going to be coming out Tuesday, Sick. which is timely. So we talk about this stuff with Senna and like the soul mechanisms and all the thoughts behind it for like an hour. The feast are so I don't need to spend all of that time in this cast. We can <laughs> focus on other things. It's just something I'm really excited. I mean, about. I just asked for a coffee. You could if you want. <laughs> yeah, you have to. I was getting ready. Sip your coffee, and I'll be like, so <laughs> Senna with Black Cleaver is actually pretty good. So a thousand gold lead as we kind of dive back into what's going down onto the rift. Boonie and Viper not making a half, but Afro's getting into another fight here. Bot side, will they continue to die? Woo! Ask will take him down in the Infernum Ultimate. Will not be enough to take down Turtle in the spread fire. Power of Evil here souls. to start to answer once again. And yeah, picking up quite a few souls on that one. We'll keep track of where he's at. Yeah, actually at 30 souls already, 10 That's minutes a good clip. in. That's it's a pretty good clip. The best I've seen was when Zven did this last week with the same style Senna. They did Senna Tom Kench. Okay. He got about 100 by 20 minutes. Um, we'll see once Whoa. the lane phase breaks open. The ramp up. How much he follows his jungler around, because you get a lot of uh, souls from camp. But again, mid. Another fight mid lane, supreme display of talent onto Froggen. No follow up, though. That's a Death Realm fight, I believe. Hooney's yep. trying to just stay out of this one as you see Power of Evil's in there. And now they get themselves to safety. It's Fly Quest on their own side. Looks like they will just safely retreat with Santorin very low. Yeah, Dig definitely in a hole, and this 15 plate strat is currently at a count of one because yeah. they have been unable to get Gotta come hungry. pushing lanes, right? Like, they haven't been able to get any ganks or chunks on a PoE, so they can't even get Zig to take the first turret, let alone move around the map to get more plays. And uh, the bot lane discrepancy in the farm is definitely starting to take off a little bit here with how much things are getting pushed around and used in these fights. You can add some of the kill money in there. We'll see how this happens one more time. Yeah, just a little bit of ward clearing. Sometimes safe, sometimes not. Nautilus does a bunch of damage Ooh. early, uh, and then just finishing him off with the Gragas cast at the end. Nicely executed there by Flyquest. Swinging. He's got the Conqueror up. It actually sounds good. Oh my word. Yeah, it's hard to fight Sen. That's really the thing. You could almost Sen. you could almost have dope him there, but you're just like, I'll take the lane advantage without dying to a turret yeah. shot if, if Grig is here. It's just like the advantage he has is pretty absurd right now. Zero, zero, and three, and like you said, that phage, you just keep the speed up with the punches, and you're always in there to fight. Viper probably could have solo killed him. There. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then it would have been really to go aggro. Would have been questionable about whether or not he trades it back. That's one of the things you never expected, is something that long range from what would be the marksman in bot lane. Son always catching you off guard with that. Souls. Double souls, yeah, mm -hmm. why not? You're gonna get two for free. I, I always go up as a Thresh player. Like, give me those things. It's AP and armor for a fresh, that is. Five to one now as they are able to pick one up on the side of Dig. Bot lane getting pushed here. Pressure from Santorin is in the jungle, so it does allow FlyQuest, Wild Turtle, and Ignar to feel safe in their positioning. We'll go ahead and start to move around and get wards down together. Power in numbers for them. Um, you'll also notice that Wild Turtle is taking a few CS. I think that's correct because there are certain things you can't get from Souls that you need to get from the item shop, like CDR or, or Lethality, which right. is why he is getting a little bit of CS as they continue to pressure Frog in mid lane. There's the Proto Belt for Ignar. Now we're waiting for the Flash Belt hook. We gotta see it come oh, in. Wow. Uh, there's also a chance that FlyQuest is going to go with two Umbral Blades this game, which will make the map just black for Dignitas. The amount of ward clearing power you get of Umbral Blade is incredible. That's true. You see the straight to Dirk over there for Wild Turtle, and it's already on Power of Evil. It, it, it becomes pretty hard as a support when you know everybody running around is able to clear your wards. Yeah. It feels so bad. So they could just black out Dignitas's map quite soon here as Viper freely clears his top side. 119 to 95 in that matchup. It's gonna be a Leandri's first for Huni. Looking towards bot side power. Vivo could blast Cone over the wall. He's got the freeze from the river down on his uh, Chakram. And they're not gonna go for that fight. They just back out. A little bit of restraint. They yep. did get the flash from Johnson. Uh, had to be a little bit respectful. The fact that teleports are up from the top laners as well. So. 
They don't want to throw away this lead since things are going relatively well for FlyQuest. See, there was a flash used pretty recently from Ignar on that bot side, trying to get a little activation in if they did have a fight for who was roaming down. So, still have that with Belt if they want to move forward as much as it works. And you're right, there's another Glaive. Picked up by Turtle on his next bat. Detrimental to the vision game. Watching Grig farm out his jungle here. He still has a stopwatch for himself. One for Froggen, one for Afro Moo. Some plays to be made there, but he's still looking for Ignars and Santorins if they get into a fight from both teams. Things are all quiet right now, waiting for two and a half on that ocean. It is the one that changes the rift, so each team would love to fight for that as Rift Herald is still up, but this is gonna be Rift Herald number one and only. Yeah, no super plates to come down from the Rift Herald no. whatsoever. My big game coming in mid. Oh, very big damage to Froggen. He's kind of stayed still. Okay. Turtle Bomb on, traded over to Power of Evil, but it's not going to be follow-up enough from Grig. They could bounce him back if he gets next to the wall with the cast, but oh. it's looking to be the Body Slam cast. Santorin just misses the side as there's a flash from Grig. Yeah, that was one of those situations where Santorin was trying to ER since you can flash out of the E stun before the R hits, but since he flashed early, he ended up just throwing both spells into nothing. Still a big play for FlyQuest. Landry's making a difference in that bot lane matchup for Viper. We saw him turn away from Booney there, but he was kind of under two turrets. His mid's gonna go down, Turtle just standing there. No, he can heal himself. Just keep being the caster marksman that he is. And stay and farm. FlyQuest feeling comfortable with the power they have right now and starting to push that forward. Yeah, turning into a really rough game for Dig. FlyQuest trying to bounce back from that C9 defeat yesterday, and they did end up going with the double Umbral Blade. So, uh, just like looking at the minimap, look at how few wards Dig have been able to keep up. And when PoE does walk, one hit, two hit, buy to the control ward. Same with PoE, he can auto queue them if he so chooses. They clear ward so easily. Quick grass escape as they'll take Rift Herald number one of the game. Where do they go with this? It's actually been that plate denial team game from FlyQuest here onto what was the Ziggs composition and what I guess would have been roaming around once Dig got that first advantage. Froggen's out of his lane a little bit more, and even having Inferno Bomb to be able to throw lane to lane when you have an advantage is huge. Remember days all the way back to Link on CLG when he would play Ziggs over and over. <laughs> yeah, Average farm members. Pick. We don't have Prawley here today. He was the Ziggs man That's as well. That's true back in 2013, but uh, the thing that Ziggs always had was the ability to stall out games with Wave Clear. Mm -hmm. It got diminished greatly with the reworks to the Baron buff throughout the years, which gave many Baron minions large amounts of MR, so it becomes harder to stall games. But that's still going to be what Dig try and do with this Ziggs pick, is just stall. We heard the coach talking at the start of the game where they think, hey, if Mordekaiser gets some items, we don't think they're gonna have that much damage for him. Ziggs is gonna be able uh, to have a lot of effectiveness. And now they're thinking about diving set. Always a challenge. Flag and drag out of the Cataclysm. They're trying to fight him in the turret now, and he goes into the Death Realm as Wild Turtle's trying to fight on the other side. Power of Evil stealing grass so he can keep himself invisible if he does want to engage. I think they're allowing Dignitas to Round make two. another move on this one. Viper is saved by Shield, but he's gonna go down eventually. And Dig with that many people there just could not be fought against from FlyQuest. Yeah, I'd be five people up there for 45 seconds, and they still haven't taken the turret. Meanwhile, that rift down bottom with Ignar is going to take two. AP Nautilus is just the cavalry on the bottom side of the map for FlyQuest right now. They know Power of Evil's bridge basically still there. It doesn't have too many places yeah, to go other than the spot. Well. They want to defend this turret. Could push him against the wall. It's only going to be one, and they could take down Hooney. He's gobbled up by Aphromoo, and then they're going to throw back the mace as they look for a bit more damage. Ooh. Hooney is playing with fire as they try to get both of the members Ooh. of FlyQuest in for the fight, taking turret shots every which way, but not coming up with a kill. FlyQuest did a very good job of trading their own health for their turret damage. There has been so much time invested here by Dignitas trying to get this turret, and they're actually not going to get it. As FlyQuest valiantly defend, it cost them one death and a bunch of health bars from PoE and Wild Turtle, but for the cost of that, they actually got an Ocean Drake and two turrets bomb. Here it is again. Yeah, this is the original dive on Viper, um, where he's just 
tanking as much as he can, and then just gets ulted by Mordekaiser, and as soon as that happens, he's like, let me take Mord into the turret, because I know he can't 1v1 me under the turret. When he pops out, uh, he's really just kind of sad. Because, because he, wave. <laughs> yeah, uh, and POE had decided not to fight a 3v5, which is probably the correct choice. Right. And this is Wild Rib. After the reset, it actually looks like FlyQuest will also get the top turret. So that's a three turret for zero engagement by FlyQuest. Very well done. Wow. Really turning what Dignitas was made to do with this comp on their head. And that becomes hard, right? Because it, when it sounds like you're going to take 15 plates and do all that, there isn't really a plan B to it yeah. if, with the comeback. You are talking a little bit about wave clearing before. You know, Froggen remembers his CLG EU days, his dream hack <laughs> with Anivia in 50 plus minute games, trying to defend bot lane before they came back, but it's a little different. Like you said with Baron, it's not gonna be as much, but they still have a few shock and awe ultimates, Infernum onto Mega Infernum Bomb. We'll see. FlyQuest has been kind of just skirting all of that damage as they get themselves into these fights. Viper pushing the bot side, they're up to inhibitor turret already before 20 minutes into the game, and that yeah. really pulls Dignitas into places that Teleport has to be up if they're gonna keep someone down there, really. Yeah, and a soul update for Wild Turtle, he's at 60. Good update. That's actually pretty low for this strategy. I saw a few moments where there was a red buff that he saw die, and he didn't pick up that soul. He's left a few sitting around on the ground as well, so uh, definitely not optimizing the souls as of yet, but still a good strat, I think. I love, uh, we just had the money up, I love looking at it. With 7,700 up on Ignar, and that's just about matching mid, yeah. over top, <laughs> 3 one two one. solo tricks. Now has a Zanyas. Well, all that happened as well. That's a big boy right there. He is not afraid to step to the front of the fight, and also be the initiation of Zanyas all the time. Mm -hmm. Why not? Santorin clearing things out with his Predator as he moves through the jungle. And everybody is even moving pretty far away from each other here. FlyQuest is feeling very free in their movement. So we see Grig bot side with Huni, and Dignitas kind of has to keep together if they are roaming through. Still on that point of not having too much vision, we we'll see how fast yeah. FlyQuest is making Dignitas replace vision, and it's always closer to their base each time. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, it's tough for Dig. Every fight they've done has kind of backfired on them. Nice sidestep by Johnson. He would maybe get nearly one hit by a Nautilus yep. combo at this point. I mean, you look at the vision scores on both sides. Oh. Or just look at the supreme display of talent. If you blink, you missed it. They are now on to the mid or top side turret. That's going to be the second tier as they lose Grig. This could be an objective fight, but then you're leaving a, a few AoE abilities up to take FlyQuest down. Dignitas may want to tempt that. Kind of happy for PoE getting to flex his Kiana a little bit. Yeah. Uh, having put so much time into it back in the day. 223 CS on Kiana. Champion who was not actually that good at CSing, especially early on in the laning phase. But uh, PoE coming off that player of the week performance where he averaged over 11 CS per minute with his Corky and Oriana games. Still having over 10 CS per minute on Kiana. Such a great year for PoE so far. He has an eighth unique pick as well for the season. So as much as I was saying Froggen is kind of that versatility, has such a vast champion pool. You get that out of Power of Evil as well. And the play style to boot. It's gonna be Ocean that we see changing the rift. As we said, both teams would want to go for that, but FlyQuest has full control right now. It would really be a go for broke moment if Dig were able to get themselves out. No vision out there yet. Nothing to really fight for. But a few core items coming up now that could change the tide of a fight at least or give them a second chance. Yeah, you can see FlyQuest fairly smoothly moving up towards Ocean Soul once they kill this. It'll be five minutes till the next Drake, which will make the earliest Ocean Soul around 28 minutes. Yep. Uh, because they do have Senna, not high sustained damage, Baron takes are difficult for FlyQuest. So generally, you're looking at Ocean Soul as your win condition, and they want him. Good flash. Flashed it out. Doesn't get anybody in base either, as Supreme Display of Talent does. And really, FlyQuest is kind of just looking for fights right now. They're so happy to. They say, we get a fight, we take this turret down. We don't really have a, a wave in mid, but they're pushed up all the way to the second tier turret as they make their way around. The long flank. And sweepers on top of the glaives as well. Oh my word. Look out. 
They're just being rude toward Dignitas' vision right now. Griggs gonna try to come up and make this a 3v4. Don't know if it's gonna happen. Aphelios now with the grab and some out. He does have Severum as well to try to get that overheal and a little bit of movement oh. down. A kill coming in onto Grig. Fight still over towards the tribush as Johnson is gonna keep himself alive and they drop Viper towards the top side. Now everybody's piled into the same spot. Power of Evil's kinda stuck towards Johnson. Severum's on as he chases and Calibrum in the back pocket. Fire over the wall, that's the follow-up damage from Calibrum! And now Crescendum is out as it starts to stack the Spectral Chukrums. Who wants to fight the Aphelios now? And they start to push FlyQuest out of the Tribrush area and back onto their own side of the map. Dignitas comes up with the fight they needed. It was such a big fight for them, mainly because they were able to split up FlyQuest so well. FlyQuest all came through a small corridor, and there kept being big Ziggs AoE spells used in that spot. So that's actually exactly the fight that Dignitas will have wanted as they try and scale up that Mordekaiser towards a little bit more tankiness and get those Ziggs and Aphelios items to come online. Let's see this again. What a scattered fight. Played well yeah. by Dig here. So basically, when the TP comes in, so much time is bought by Aphromoo's consume, and then sure, Viper ultimates the Aphelios, but he's got the Healy gun, yep. <laughs> so he's unable <laughs> to win down. the 1v1. Um, meanwhile, Hootie buys a bunch of time in ultimate, and Santorin has to immediately stop watch the Ziggs ult, so it's like, at this point, like, Johnson's back to full health because of Severum, and he can just kind of flash in for these finishes. Oh, man. That Calibrum tag as well, over the shoulder of his teammates. Yeah, some of that stuff looks pretty damn cool. He's got a smile on his face. 2-1-2 and two now, he finishes up the Infinity Edge. A little more crit behind that as well with the Cloak, and he is feeling great on that pick. Things get turned around a bit, but that does not mean FlyQuest is out of the fight. They are still very much in and ahead in this game by 4,000 gold as Dignitas just gets a bit of breathing room and they're able to push out of their base here. Yeah, and Turtle's still only at 68 souls. He doesn't have the incredibly long center range. Definitely slowed down. Viper, no flash. He's probably dead. One lick, make it quick. A little follow-up damage from that showstopper. That wasn't even from the top rope, though. It was the bottom rope. That's really why it interesting here, Riv. Normally when you send Trigal down bot, you lose Baron. But against a Senna Kiana team, you don't. They don't have the damage to kill it quickly. Dig making a comeback here. Pushing towards mid. They don't have a shoulder ward towards their top side. This could be a big initiation. A grab by Frog, and Hooney just makes it out of that. And Dignitas will stay safe. There's the damage we were looking for from Ziggs, though, with the satchel on a low turret. Goes down. And I circled the three dying souls. Turtle's been pushed off a lot of Senna souls, which is also mm -hmm. basically the way he farms. So the sustained damage, or the a big bit of their damage is Wild Turtle, who's just not getting the souls he needs to become super powerful Absolutely. by this point of the game, which is making this game very close. Down, see if he find any jungle camps or more CS for himself. He's just playing the ward clearing game now, at least getting a bit more vision score. Always helps, a little gold. So he backs, a little bit of a reset for both teams as we have one minute on that Ocean Soul coming through. And really nothing else for yeah. Dignitas to have to think about after they push those waves. A really great job for them to be able to be outside their base here. The Visions push forward though from FlyQuest, so they're gonna see Dig coming. Yeah, from the looks of it, we're gonna have all major ultimates up. Yep. And also Johnson's gonna have his flash on Aphelios, which is gonna be really big as he's on uh, very nearly his biggest power spike. He will have that once he completes Hurricane. So uh, a little bit of mid priority coming in from Big as well. They're, they're gonna wanna just maybe even force a fight yeah. on this trade. So it looks like Johnson will have full Gravitum for this fight and he's gonna wait on that Infernum so he can use this ultimate. He may not spread it out just yet. That's the big one he wants to use in his Moonlight Vigil. All right, so PoE and Viper want to flank, but Dig is just trying to get mid priority with five people. Almost had Wild Turtle on the flag and drag. You can see how resilient FlyQuest is to that engage, being able to back off quick, having a bit of movement speed, and takes on the front line. Yeah. Two flanks coming around. Viper and Power of Evil from the river. Dufuni has a lot to think about. Turtle goes quite low as Drig is on him immediately. Jungle to the marksman, not a great thing. It could be Johnson going down. He does get a face breaker that pulls him in and drops him to the mat. Cooney is now with power. People is turtle and Grigor going 1v1. How is Aphromoo still alive in this 3v1? They finally 
bench the frog, and it is going to be Grig getting chased out of this as well. He thought he could take Turtle down, but that power does come out a little bit if you're soloing the center. Riv, that was the oddest fight because FlyQuest was trying to flank basically yes. the whole time, yet it was the other three who killed Johnson. It wasn't the Kiana or the set flank that did the majority of the damage. I'll have to catch the start of that again to see. I think it was just Santorin's AP Gragas and, not, and the AP Nautilus that did so much burst on Johnson to catch him off guard. Now they can turn for Baron uh, and actually go for the soul maybe afterwards. Dig is just going to try and rush this soul denial, actually. Oh, Power of Evil just behind. He's trailing. Okay, so he sees him on the ward. Griggs yeah, is just gonna, gonna say it. whatever. He should just go over the wall. Don't fight the Kiana. You don't want to be 2 HP when you're in that dragon pit. So this is a good steal. They should be able to make it up. But wait, Viper's here. Viper just teleported yeah. in. He's gonna be able to start the fight with Johnson. Severum gives him the wound speed. Facebreaker brings him in. Oh my word. And they're gonna be able to get that kill very quick coming in from Kiana and Zet onto Johnson's Aphelios. And this means it's going to be one Dignitas member of the Crick without a paddle. That's Grig. He's trying to paddle as much as he can, but he goes down to Santorin. And two Dignitas members fall immediately after a big fight where they just lost as well. Yep, big death timer is coming in on the side of Dignitas as well, where the Baron minion wave is already pushed up for FlyQuest. This is a window for them to try and take some big advantages. There's that wave clear we were talking about. Although slow, they put the power and numbers down there so Viper doesn't feel like he can get anything off that turret. Booney just trying to trail. You can see how hard it is once the Baron up minions are just pounding those turrets. Power of Evil takes down topside. FlyQuest now in control of the map once again. A little bit of a stutter step there yep. where they did find Dignitas overthrowing them. It looked like Dig was mounting a comeback until they lose that fight in the mid lane because yep. Johnson gets bursted by the support jungle AP combo. And now they're in danger of losing all of their inhibitor turrets. He's taking some shots. Wow, it's happening so quick too. They really can't, they don't have time to think about which one to go to or what fight to take. They're gonna get healed up a little bit on the bot side by Turtle as well as take damage from that. So Torrent can separate the fight. And you have Power of Evil on the top side, even low on mana. Nobody wants to take that full fight with him. And they do drop another inhibitor. Dignitas has to choose when to go. They just weather the storm. Looks like FlyQuest is going to let him live for now. They do back out without too many minion waves crashing in on each side. It does get a little hectic when you don't have your full wave. So FlyQuest, take a breather. They'll be back three minutes onto Ocean Drake. So we still have a lot of time for that. Silver lining is that the Ocean Soul still hasn't gone over to FlyQuest. I think that'll be a nail in the coffin, but Power of Evil still in a spot where he can one-shot anyone he catches at the right angle. It's difficult, though. You got, like, a stopwatch, a Felios, a Gargoyle, yeah, Stoneplate. Yeah, he just got that, right? Such a surplus. Yeah. Another Stoneplate on Jarvan. Like, it is going to be difficult for POE to find a good engage, but really this, this is likely going to be... Dig trying to defend this third inhibitor while we're waiting two and a half minutes for the next Ocean Drake. And if Dig tries to fight in defense of this third inhibitor, the game could end. Woo! That was close. That was super close. I almost thought we were going to see Eggnog go all the way to the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson would love to use that power we were just talking about, but Booney gets zeroed out as soon as he steps off that uh, the base gate. And that was pretty scary. Yeah. You got to question why he was out there. Yep. <laughs> With the final inhibitor coming uh, to be pushed by FlyQuest. This makes the defensive inhibitor three nearly impossible. So have a clear from Johnson. Yeah. Was good towards the bot. But the it's going to be coming in on every wave kill. now. Smack that in here. <laughs> it's, it's like you're grabbing from the little stones off of it. There. All right. FlyQuest now has one priority in mind, and that's two next turrets. Good grab off, depth charge, and that is going to get fizzled out. You can see it on cooldown for Ignar. Flash for Wild Turtle, as he actually did not want to go down to 10%. Probably wouldn't have died right away, but they do use the summoners to back off. Dignitas lived to fight another day, but can they get anything on the way out? Start pressuring their vision up, moving up a little bit. Not even a ward stands outside of their base due to the builds and the inventory of FlyQuest. Yeah. Everyone on Jake thinks there's been a reset. Oh, now it does. Dang it. There hasn't been a reset. Greg! Oh, no. 
That's going to be Greg possibly going down. Inferno Maul coming through. Greg gets the flag and drag as he almost gets blasted back by a cast there. Keep himself alive. He's actually backing, which you can run faster to the base than you can back for eight seconds if you're in the base at that time. And they are going to be taking shots. Turtle misses out on the ultimate, but they are just going to back off and have 30 seconds on this ocean. I like the idea there by FlyQuest. Uh, again, got to keep calling out the massive vision denial from having two Humble Blades insane. on this team. Uh, making Dig kind of have to face check literally everywhere they go. But with three inhibs down, it's so in, so difficult to defend this Ocean Drake. Dig might try a bit of a desperation, but with where they're currently set up, probably not. That's right. It's like when you have three inhibs down, leaving your base isn't really on the agenda. Especially then when you can't even find a place to put down vision. The only wards that are really surviving are the ones just outside the base on that wall. They're possible initiation spots for the side of Dignitas. And FlyQuest has to be a little bit more careful to clear them. Ocean Drake coming in, like you said, that possibly the nail in the coffin. And just look at how this game works all around. The triple kill for Ignar in the start. Oh my word. Froggen. So quick before he could even Zanya is down to half HP and almost taken down by Super Minions here as he slows him with a minefield. 70% of his health was Kiana EQ. He stopwatched the second Q and flashed the all. It's kind of absurd that Froggen is alive right now. <laughs> because he dodged two of the most crucial abilities from Kiana. Well well played by Froggen actually to live through that. That's the whole point of Froggen. You just keep alive, right? You keep jumping. Keep yeah. living. Don't get hit by the truck. Don't get hit by the car. Don't fall in the water. And right now, he's able to do that with the satchel and flash. Kept himself up. Barrier still there for some possible play beyond that with Zanya's on cooldown. Kind of every way they have to work around FlyQuest is just getting dwindled away, and FlyQuest can keep coming back that much faster to fight again. 15 to 5 here as Baron's going to go over to FlyQuest ever so slowly. <laughs> just kind of scratch at the objective to take it down. One day, Turtle will have 100 souls. It'll be soon. He has 97. He'll get two souls off the Baron, and then he'll hit his 100 soul. Great boss down. Yeah. One more soul, and Turtle will have 125 additional range. Currently only 100 additional range from the soul tracking. Whose soul will he take? Probably like a range minion. Poor range minion. If only he knew how much power he was giving him. Just go grab it. Oh, there they are. Go grab it. Huh. Oh, it's so sick. He's gonna die. He's thinking. He's not gonna pick it up. Oh. Pew, pew. <laughs> Literally. Good clears coming in from Dig. They're on the, the tightrope on this one, though. FlyQuest just figuring out how to cut that line at this point. Ocean Drake up. They can take an erroneous fight. Still feel good. Yeah. Walk out of the base for a second. Come back to fight Dignitas again a little bit later. Viper pushing in top by himself to now join the rest of the team. Crescendum and Calibrum up. Not the greatest clears here for Johnson, but he can still get the work done with those guns in hand. Man, this is just a battle here. Finally, a bit of an initiation. That's just going to be for the inhib. A pull in on to Hooney. A bit of a fight from Greg as he flag and drags in, but it's instantly Whoa. deleted as a pretty squishy Jarvan. Viper's fighting two on the next turn. Takes a third to exit himself out of that ring and keep the fight going. A nice tag in by Ignar's hook there as they keep Aphromoo in a spot for death. But they want the inhibitor turrets. The minions are now following them through with this Baron. And it looks like they may be able to seal the deal finally. Whoa, Santorin flies in with the Zanya Zan. He's going to be going down under the turret as they just throw themselves into the fire, knowing the Nexus should follow along with them. FlyQuest is going to move it to eight and four on the spring split. Another solid win by FlyQuest. In this one, you can see a little bit of exasperation on PoE's face because sure, they sure. had such a big early lead and there were actually moments in that game where Dig was almost able to mount a comeback. But looking back at the game, 17 kills to six, Dragon Soul in hand, multiple Barons. Yeah. FlyQuest should feel okay about this 1-1 one, one week with a loss to C9 and a win over Dignitas. And what a turnaround. Do you expect an AP 